on a cold and windy Saturday night at the MCG in front of 68,000 fans, the first place Cats defeated the fifth place Blues by 30 points. This is your Round 18 Match Review. What's up guys, Ben Reeve here from The Hoop Show for another uh, match review video. So let's kick it off. Uh, what a win against Carlton on the weekend, hey? Uh, I was a bit nervous going into this one, to be honest. I thought, ooh, uh, we got to go, got the job done against Melbourne. Um, almost like our grand final, but um, we... Yeah, I thought, we, 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 are we going to back this one up? Um, we did. We did, and we did it in grand style, and uh, it was like uh, men playing boys, wasn't it? Um, I was so proud of, proud of our guys. Uh, just got the job done. It was, a, it was a bit of an arm wrestle in the first quarter there, and Carlton were very much um, on brand for them this year. Uh, but after that first quarter, or part of the second, I suppose, as well, uh, the Cats really uh, started doing their thing, and, and, and Carlton couldn't go up that next gear. Uh, and it was really all about us from that point onwards. Um, so, yeah, welcome to the show. If this is your first time uh, joining us, thank you for checking us out. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, uh, please consider it. Uh, it'd be really helpful if you could. Brad Close uh, heavily supports uh, the show. No, he doesn't. Um, but, no, please, if you could subscribe, that would be wonderful. Um what else? Uh, I've got a little plug this week for uh, a local business. I put the call out on Twitter a few days ago uh, for any any small businesses with less than 20 staff that wanted a little plug on the show. So this week I'm giving a little plug to Next Level Concrete Constructions, as you can see down the bottom there. So uh, check those guys out on Twitter, uh, sorry, on Instagram, uh, and I think they're on Facebook as well. They do a good job. I think they did some work for Paddy Dangerfield recently as well. So um, they're a good, mob, good, good bunch of people. Um, Tim is a Hawthorne supporter though, but we're not going to hold that against him. So, but look, give him a call. <laughs> I think his family are all Geelong. He's got some uh, family history with the club as well. So, um, but um, anyway, uh, check those guys out if you can. All right. So, some takeaways from me uh, for the for the round. Uh, it's eight straight wins for us. So that's pretty good. Um, you know, I can't remember. I think St Kilda was maybe the last game that we lost and. Things weren't looking too great at that point in time, but uh, yeah, it's amazing. Eight weeks later, uh, goodness me, top of the ladder. Um, just travelling nicely, aren't we? It's, it's going great guns. Um, and it was a bit of a statement win too, as I said off the top. You know, it was really nice to get that win against Melbourne, uh, but this felt like it was a, yeah, the consolidation of our credentials as, as one of those top two teams. And now we've got a bit of daylight on third and fourth on the ladder as well. So top two is looking a lot more positive and realistic for us moving forward um and i said also said it was a one-sided game after half time it was a bit, very much um all about geelong and what we wanted to do and, and carlton just whatever they tried they nothing was coming off of them they just they just couldn't make it work they just didn't have any connection from from the mids to the forwards to the to the backs and no, nothing was working they tried a few different things we really shut down their short game pretty well after quarter time uh, and uh, our back line was tremendous our forwards were doing the business um Everyone to a man was was great. Uh, yeah, we lost men and goal early with an injury, but um, that'll happen. Um, it's good to see the De Conning brothers get their first game against each other. There's a lot of buzz around that. Uh, yeah, so that'll be the new basketball background thing. Uh, <laughs> they're brothers. Um, that'll be mentioned every chance they get. Um, I liked that the Cats had 60 points from turnovers, so a lot of pressure. It was just um, that was the really big, big word, wasn't it? Pressure. The whole game was fantastic. Just the amount of uh, energy and effort we were uh, supplying. Uh, I just thought after the Melbourne win, surely there's nothing left in the tank, but we just went again. Um, so maybe we're through that training phase. It's played up a little bit, that sort of talk about mid-season uh, training phase, but uh, yeah. Uh, and it's 14 out of 16 against Carlton, so a little bit of a... Little bit of a um, we're a bogey team for them now, so I'm, I'm going to be... You'd be a brave person if you tipped against Geelong in Carlton games, even though they do trouble us from time to time. And we, we always remember the times that we lost. Um, but yeah, six, 14 out of 16 against them. Um, four goals from Carlton after quarter time. That was a bit of a worry for them. We dominated the centre clearances uh, pretty well for most of the night. Um, and then, as I say, our back line was tremendous. I think we had 50, 50 sorry, intercept possessions uh, from, from the misfits uh, all night. So it was just really fantastic. Um, really pleased to see the ongoing improvement from uh, Max Holmes and Sam DeConning. Just seems to get better every week. Um, kept the common medalist goalless. 
Um, I didn't have any of my votes, but now I think I probably should have. Um, but yeah, kept him goalless and uh, Max Holmes. Uh, you got to love him. There's so many Geelong... It's one of those years where there's just like... You know, normally there's one or two Geelong players that we love, but now it's like, oh, goodness me, how do I pick? Like, there's like six of them. Brad, you're still my number one. Closey, I love you. Um, you're still number number one, Brad. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's fine. No one, no one's no one's knocking you off your perch just yet, Brad. Um, I really, I do, as much as I do like how Grind's going lately, uh, I can't believe someone called for him to, to get dropped this week um, after the game. Like, he, Grind was great. Uh, what are you talking about? Anyway, um, and I loved, and I loved, and he, he didn't get enough love across the AFL community, but Blitzarves on Cripps, he killed Cripps. Uh, Blitzarves can do any job you give him. Um, he should be, he is one of the, I think he's an elite, and I only, well, I use that word, um, I don't call many players elite in the AFL. Um, I would call, if you're an elite, you're a top 10 player in the AFL. I, I think Blitzarves is a top 10 player, um, Stuart. And um, Cameron probably being a couple of others in there as well. I know that's three in the top ten, but I think those three, um, a lot of people would argue that are top ten players. Maybe you wouldn't argue Blitzarves, but I'm, I'm throwing Blitzarves in that. I reckon he's fantastic and does whatever job. And Sam DeConning, you know, thank you for being so good in the back line. It's allowed Blitz to just do his thing. Um, it's worked out really well. Let's have a look uh, at quarter by quarter. So the first quarter, um, Cat's got two goals through Stanley and Atkins. Uh, Charlie Kuno got off the leash a little bit with a couple of goals. He was looking pretty dangerous, wasn't he, there? Um, but it was like a finals-like intensity. It was fantastic. Uh, it was bang, 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 pinging around, you know, a few skill errors and whatnot. But that's what you expect from that type of game. Um, and the Blues got up. Oh, hello there, Tom. Um, Blues got up by uh, three points in the end of the quarter. Second quarter, though, uh, with uh, Man and Gola subbed out for the game, we got Jed Buse on. And uh, Tommy Hawkins went bang, bang, and kicked a couple of goals. So got on your Tommy, back into it. Uh, and we got some goals from Jezza and uh, Maxie Holmes as well, which is always nice. Um, Zach Tui started to lift against his old mop. He started to look pretty dominant in that quarter. Uh, and we did. Uh, we won the quarter by nearly four goals. I think we won it by 20 points or so. Um, and it was starting to turn for us, uh, especially towards the back end of that quarter as well. And then into the third, uh, didn't we love baby Guthrie went Bang! From 40. Uh, it was a contentious 50-metre penalty, but, um, you know, we'll take those. That's okay. Carlton fans just tearing up. All <laughs> they don't like it when the umpires pay a free kick to the opposition, do they? Um, but I will agree that that was a rubbish free 50-metre penalty. I think Danger was holding the ball and they said didn't give it back to Guthrie in time. Um, anyway, but it was a great, great goal from Guthrie. Uh, but it was surpassed by the goal from Jeremy Cameron. From Cameron's corner, around the corner, bang! Um, how good was that? <laughs> I couldn't believe he kicked that, it was great. Um, Maxi Home got his second goal, I think it was a bit of a Joe the Goose, that one. Over the top, from memory serves me correctly, yeah, I think that was the Joe the Goose over the top there, that one. Um, and we won the third quarter by 12 points, so we're just pushing ahead here. Uh, fourth quarter was a bit of a fizzer. Um, yeah, look, Jezza got another goal, and um, Stengel did some nice things, especially kicked to Selwood there, who, who gave it off to the younger player in um, Myers to get a goal sort of late. Um, but, yeah, other than that, you know, Duncan was looking pretty good, and Brad, even Brad Close got a fair bit of the ball, which was nice to see Brad getting a bit of touch. Um, but it was kind of a bit of a rubbish quarter, really. Cats won it by a point. Um, but, yeah, the job was done after three-quarter time, really, wasn't it? So... A uh, couple of big moments from the game. Uh, I really liked Stanley's first goal. I love it when Stanley gets involved in the game early. It uh, makes me feel good when he's up and about nice and early. Uh, the Jezza 30-metre handball. Watch the highlights if you haven't seen that one. Jezza handballing it to set up the Stengel goal. Uh, oh, thing of beauty. He just went, I was like, it was like a bang, sort of a sideways thing. It went about 30 metres like a bullet. Um, check that one out if you haven't seen that. It was great. I mean, can't just... Can't, we can't judge Jezza on how many goals he kicked because uh, he does so much more than that. Um, and that was just one of those moments like, goodness me, any other player, that wasn't going to be a goal. Um, but Jezza just made a goal out of that, thanks to his good work there. Uh, yeah, men and goal are getting subbed out. That was that was a pretty big moment, but didn't affect us too much in the end. And Jed Buse, I think he was going to get managed, but um, didn't in the end. So oh, well, maybe he'll get managed this week against Port. Or maybe he won't. Um, the downfield free kick for Selwood. Uh... It was probably there, I think. Um, but yeah, Carlton fans don't like that, do they? Especially when it comes to Selwood, they don't like that. Um, and how good was Joel Selwood when the Carlton had all the numbers? Uh, I think it was the third quarter or something like that, and they were pushing forward. 
and it was like a two on one or a three on one and so would just just put his head over it took the high hit um and yeah we get a goal against the run of play that was just that was my favourite moment of the night because I was actually sitting there at one point thinking, oh, geez, Selwood's turned it over a couple of times tonight. He's getting a lot of it and he's doing a lot of tough stuff, but, geez, he's frustrated me a little bit. And then he did that and I just went, oh, I'm such an idiot. Um, I'm never picking on Joel Selwood again. He's great. Um, fantastic. And that was just, for me, that was the highlight of the night. Just The boys loved it and I could tell they loved it. Um, we talked about Jess's goal. Uh, my votes for the round, uh, I've gone uh, Joel Selwood. I gave him the one vote. In the end, I know a lot of people had him best on ground, but I, I thought a mm, couple of errors and just a couple of um, disposals didn't quite connect. Um, but yeah, I thought there were a couple of others better on the ground than him. I had Cam Guthrie for the two votes. Uh, I gave three to Reese Boy, Reese Stanley. I thought he was big all night and I uh, like to see a bit of aggression from Reese. Uh, aggression mixed with just doing the fundamentals well. Um, I don't expect Reese to hit. Uh, pinpoint passes inside 50 or uh, chip away the side, little 20 metre kick sideways. I just want Reese to take a strong mark, contest, um, be aggressive and bomb it long race. Um, if you're going to turn it over, turn it over 50 metres down the ground. Um, I'm happy the way you're going Reese at the moment. I think Geelong looks so much better when Reese is playing well. Um, it's great. And you would agree wouldn't you Tom? Yes Tom agrees. Hang on, hang on Tom, nod your head. I think it's a bit of a nod, anyway. Um, Zach Tui, I gave the four votes. Uh, Tui was great all night, had heaps of it. He was just waxing off with um, him and Blitz. I've just kept sharing the ball uh, with each other all night. It was great to see Tui just do well against his old mob again. Um, he, loved, he loves playing him, doesn't he? He was getting the booze a little bit. I don't know why. That's, come on, Carlton. You're better than that. Maybe you're not. Um, but, you yeah, know, Tui was a good servant for your club, and he's been an ever, ever, even better servant for the Cats. And uh, we're, we're happy to have him, and I, lo I love the guy. Good personality to have around the club, too. Uh, Black, Mark Blitzars, my number one, five votes for Blitz. Uh, best on ground. I think uh, the fans had him as their, um, in the poll that I put out as the number one as well. They might have had, if I had Selwood in that poll, uh, I suspect it might have been a bit of a closer uh, competition there, but um, I didn't. Um, but, yeah, look, Selwood played a great game, too. I had him, gave him the one vote, as I said. Um, in terms of Carlton, I think... Sam Walsh was pretty good, um, got a stack of it. I don't know if he was super effective, but um, did get a fair bit of it and probably looked like the the Blues' best player on the night. Charlie Curno, very dangerous early, uh, but then we sort of got on top of him in the end and we just, Carlton just didn't really get the supply after that sort of first and second quarter. It was more the work we were doing through the midfield um, in, our, in, our, um, in our defense. Just Carlton just couldn't, couldn't get a look at it. Um, and Nick Newman was okay, did some, did some nice things as well. I think a couple of Carlton Mob were, the fans weren't too happy with Nick Newman, but I thought he was okay. Um, all right, let's have a look at some of the tweets of the week. Who have we got first? Let's go with Terry. Now, Terry says, Joel Selwood is a champion. Less than 2% of AFL players will play 252 matches. Tonight, Joel Selwood just won his 50, 252nd match. Joel, you're a champion. Um, what more can we say about you? I know a couple of weeks' time against the Bulldogs, I think, at home, you'll be playing your 350th match, providing you don't get managed or anything like that, or injured. Uh, that'll be an amazing occasion. Um, there's, I hope when the when this Joel story's all said and done, he's played 350 games, he's a premiership captain, um, and he has his little walk off into the sunset. Or on his motorbike, or whatever. I don't think he's got a motorbike, but do you have a motorbike, Joel? So what? I don't know. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it all ends well for Joel with a premiership medallion around his neck, number four, and the most premierships for a Geelong player ever, uh, playing for the Cats. So that would be terrific. Um, thanks, Terry, for that one. Now, Tiffany Backer uh, says, "Terrific performance, tough, relentless. I haven't always been a fan of Myers, but his tackling and pressure in recent weeks has been outstanding. Good on him." Yeah, Tiffany, I'm, I'm loving Grian. Um, and look, I'm put my hand up. I'll, you know, at times I've been frustrated with him. Probably not as much as some fans on socials out there. Um, probably frustrated, but I, I guess I haven't fully appreciated the role that he's got at the club. And I guess the more I watch of him and the more I come to learn what that role looks like, the more I appreciate how difficult it is. So um, he's not going to be maybe what it was in previous years where he's kicking two or three goals. He might pop up now and then and do that, but... Um, but that sort of high forward role that he's playing is a really tough role and, and he's really bringing that tackling pressure 
um, that we need um, and just even he's even making better decisions now and he's just you can see that look on him he's just he's feeling a lot more confident isn't he Tom yes uh, Tom Tom agrees um, everything's just going well with Brian I'm really pleased uh, he he needs a bit of confidence he's, he's another one and it's coming at the right time too at the end of the season um, you know hopefully he'll carry that through to the end of the year that'd be fantastic if he could please uh all right so thank you tiffany uh, next tweet is from scotland 2007 i love what patrick has done for the team but he's cooked bring in parfit or cooper scotland uh yeah look i don't know if he's cooked he's he's on the back end for sure Oh, it's a hard one. I, 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 I'm not hard about whether to include this tweet on the show, but I thought, oh, look, people are talking about it. So, um, yeah, look, Dusty, uh, not Dusty, goodness me, Danger. Um, he's had he's had better games, and you know, first game of the year, round one, he killed it, um, and he's had a couple of other good games as well. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough one for me. I think we keep him in the side, but um, there's just a couple of yeah disposals that really can frustrate you, especially and. Um, and we've come to expect really good things from Danger over the years, and um, he's he's not that player that he was in 2016 anymore, and that's fair enough. Uh, neither is Joel Selwood, um, probably the only one that seems to be getting better at with age is um, Tom Hawkins, which is just crazy. Um, but it's just you know, um, Danger. I think look, he's a big game player. He, he was huge against. Um, Brisbane in that prelim. Um, let's just judge Danger. Let's get it. Let's get him through to the finals and keep him as cherry ripe as possible. Let's get him there and uh, you watch Danger just prove everyone wrong um, and just play the final series of his life and another one that really deserves that premiership medal as well. Let's hope he gets it. Um, so thanks, Scotland. Now Jennifer Cromedy says total team effort, massive pressure and commitment in the heat of the contest. Love the general flow and run from the back. More to come with Tom Stewart coming back. Uh, SD Key, Sam Conning, Calm, Perfection. It's, yeah, it was one of those games, wasn't it, Jennifer, where it, the whole team just seemed to be in unison. Everything just clicked. Everyone knew their role. Um, the ball movement was beautiful. Uh, yeah, we, we were, there was a moment in those first quarter, first and early part of the second, where Carlton were challenging us. And you're sitting there watching it and you're thinking, oh, God, are we, are we going to be able to resist the Carlton a wave and and we did and then we got on top and then we really got on top um and it looked irresistible at one point it was just amazing across the board and sam deconning what 16 games now stopped the best stopped the cover medalist kept him score uh, goalless for the night um about five intercept marks you know you're running out of things to say about the guy aren't you? he's 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 amazing thanks jennifer um who's next all right arge arge geese Geese, guys? Uh, I'm not sure. Sorry, Arge. Um, Holmes appreciation post. Geelong Cats youngsters get nowhere near the recognition that other clubs, than other clubs, but the next-gen brigades coming through are super exciting. It's been the thing with us Geelong fans uh, this year and last year and years, years gone by that uh, we're, we just play the old guys. We're a retirement home uh, for fading superstars. You know, Holmes, Sam DeConning, uh, Cooper Stevens, Brad Close, Jack Henry... There's just a couple. Um, there's a lot of young guys. There's a good core of young guys that are going to take us through the next 10 years. Um, and look, I wouldn't be surprised if we find another gem in the draft. We've still got Toby Conway to come in as well. Um, for me, he's one of he's. I've got Maxie Holmes as a possibility as a future captain. I've also got Toby Conway as a chance as well down the line. Uh, yeah, it's the, I'm happy with it. Don't worry about Geelong's young players. Um, and who knows, we'll, we'll, we'll still be a destination club for years to come as well. We'll probably get someone else uh, through the draft period uh, in the end of this year as well. Uh, I don't think we want Buddy, do we? No, we don't want Buddy. We'll uh, we'll see what we'll see what's out there, uh, and we'll get we'll get a couple of guns, I'm sure, and have another tilt um, at a premiership, a back to back premiership. Uh, we've only we've only done it once in the history of the club. Geez, I'm going early, aren't I? I've got to win this. I've got to get got to get through to the end of this year, don't we, and win the premiership, and then maybe we'll think about back-to-back -back once we've done that. Slow down, slow down. Jesus Christ, I've lost my head a little bit there. All right, that's okay. I love I love the cats, and I get a bit carried away sometimes. That's how it goes. All right, thanks, Arj. Now, Brad, uh, welcome to the show, Brad. I don't think you've been on before. Um, Brad says, Mark Blit Blitzarves, or Blit Blickers, is an incredible player, elite defender and wingman, can play as a tagger, and as a gun when he plays ruck. Wouldn't be too many players that have played the game that have been as good as him in so many roles. 
100% agree, Brad. Love love the man. Um, yeah, <laughs> from where he's come from, and, you know, we'll stop talking about it. He's a steeplechaser, blah, blah, blah. Um, he had no right to be an AFL player, uh, and no one gave him a chance, let alone me. Um, and where he's come from, he's a two-time Kaji Greaves medalist. He's looking at a third you know, Jeremy Cameron and Tom Stewart will have a bit of a say in that. Uh, I, don't, I don't really know how the coaches vote on these types of things, but uh, he's bloody doing a good job in the role that he's in, so you can't say he's not. Um, Stewart hasn't played as many games, and Cameron's a bit hit and miss, uh, even though he's, his best is probably the best in the comp at times. Um, Blitzhoff's week in, week out. Amazing. Um, Guthrie's a chance too, I guess, but there's just so many players at Geelong this year that have just had... Cr- career years for the club and then again we talked about before those young players that have just really stepped up as well and our bottom six I think someone else said sorry I haven't included the tweet but someone else was saying our bottom six this year is so much closer to our top six um, than than it has been for many many years Um, so yeah it's fantastic it's just really I'm just loving it Um, anyway um, look that's the that's the end of the show Um, if you uh, haven't already subscribed please consider it doing so Uh, check out the other video we've got Um, we've just posted a a video of the um, from Jake Rippon who was the fan at the Melbourne game uh, doing the old come on Um, so yeah he was uh, we've got him on the show he loved it Uh, had a great time with Paul uh, so check that one out and I will see you guys uh, in a few days time Okay, take care.